Hey guys, welcome to today's model workshop. I'm here in Sydney. Uh, I grew up in Sydney and uh, I'm here on a quick family trip. I normally live in Melbourne, Australia. And today I'm going to show you Hobbyco, which is the biggest hobby, co uh, hobby store in Sydney and I think the largest in Australia. It's inside this building, which is the Queen Victoria building, which is just gorgeous. It's this massive Victorian shopping complex. It's, it's the size of a city block. It's quite extraordinary. And back in the 70s, they were going to knock it down. I remember this. They were going to knock it down to make a car park. Can you believe it? Um, yeah, I'll show you the photo from the outside. And then we'll head into Hobbyco. This is Sydney outside. It's crazy. It's tropical. There's the town hall. It's warm! It's very warm, says Phoebe. <laughs> and this is the Queen Victoria building. It's beautiful. <laughs> of master box. I'm impressed by that. Price wise focus 1250 so that's pretty average prices for Australia. Um, so yeah really good range there. Down below, some metallery. Over here we have ships. It's a good range, so how does it compare to Japan? Bit of sci-fi. So $365, but I think I saw it for about $200 in Japan, maybe $220. It's a big difference, big, big, big difference. I found this kit, which is one of the ones I bought in Japan. Here it is $70. In Japan, it cost me, oh, I'm trying to remember, 3200 yen, I think it was, so about $35, $37. It's quite a big difference. For the rest of the aircraft kits, so they've got some of the big impressive 132nd scale bombers, which is good to see. A bit of 125th up the top. How are these prices? Let's have a look. 250 for the Mitchell and 250. Yeah, well they're both Mitchells. <laughs> okay. Lots of 148, so it seems to be sort of smaller scales down to the larger scales down the bottom. So here's our Tamiya Mosquito. $2.55. The Tamiya Zero that I bought. So this is the exact kit that I bought in Shizuoka. Here in Australia it is $145. And I bought it for 80, maybe 82, I think it was. So it just goes to show what a difference there is between Australian and Japanese prices, at least for Japanese kits. I, um, I can't claim to be an expert on the others, but for stuff that's made in Japan, crazy, crazy price difference. Here's the Corsair, the brand new fancy one. Oh no, it's the older one, but still. <laughs> Sorry about the wobbling. And that is... $182.50 <clears throat> so that's a big price difference for Tamiya stuff certainly here in Australia and this is you know, the biggest model kit store in Australia as far as I know please let me know in the comments if I'm wrong there but um, yeah this is as good as it gets range wise here in Australia so it's comparable range wise I won't deny um, certainly slightly bigger range than anything we've got in Melbourne all in one place but uh, price-wise, we take a bit of a beating here in Oz. Which is why I was so excited to get to Japan. Lots of air fix. I mean, that's a pretty good range. I'm, I'm not at all going to say Hobby Code 
isn't competing on range. Range-wise, this is great. This is really impressive stuff compared to what we see in Melbourne. Some planes up the top there, which I like. <laughs> Let's keep going back into 135th. I'm having little flashbacks to Tokyo here. It's cool. Bit of 148 there. Price wise, let's check it out. Choose one at random. 17, 17.95. 27, that's crazy. So there is a good range of the slightly harder to find kits like AFE, Take Home, Meng, stuff like that. It's a great range. So I have to show you this one. So this Archer in the Tamiya store was about $38 and here $83. So yeah, it's roughly double. Ouch. You know, I get that they have to import stuff and it comes a long way and they've got to make you know, a living. I get that, but ooh, it hurts. This is the machine in Krieger section, so let's see how it compares. Not too bad. That's a hundred dollars. Actually, not too bad compared to what I would have paid in uh, Akihabara. That's not too bad at all. And yes, in a tick. And a hundred dollars for that isn't too bad either. That is not too bad. Hmm. I'm pleasantly surprised. They have a massive sci-fi section. Absolutely massive, which is great. And yeah, well impressed. Lots and lots of sci-fi. Cars. Lots of cars. Yeah, we're gonna go upstairs in a tick. But yeah, as you can see, their sci-fi area is great. Yeah, I'm impressed by Hobbyco. It's good. So we keep checking out these guys. So I've re-recorded this section because my daughter was complaining in the background. There were just constant complaints about, we've got to go now, I've had enough, I need to buy something. So anyway, um, the science fiction section was just amazing, really very comprehensive. I, um, I would put it on a par with any science fiction hobby store that I saw in Japan. Um, I would actually say that I think Hobbyco in Sydney caters a little bit more to sci-fi than to old school scale models. Um, maybe that's a demographics thing, maybe they're, obviously yeah, they're smart cookies so they would know what they're doing, but um, obviously that must be what the, the punters want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really, I was tremendously impressed with their sci-fi offerings in Sydney. Um, lots of pop culture stuff as well, as you can see. Um, so yeah, I guess, <clears throat> would I say, Oh, I would guess that the pop culture stuff and the sci-fi stuff is probably about half of the model offering. Um, you'll see more of the toys when we get upstairs. But yeah, the actual traditional scale model stuff, so tanks, you know, planes, military, cars, boats, um, probably only about a third of the store. As you can see, sci-fi really well supported. So let's go upstairs. Rockets, radio control, slot cars, Meccano, Lego, etc. It's very toy heavy upstairs, which you know is great. My daughter loved it. Um, heaps and heaps of die cast cars along one wall. You'll see them in just a moment here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, just an entire wall of die cast cars of all kinds, which is cool. You know, it's it's again 
if the punters want that and that's where they can make their money, good for them. Um, I actually saw a few little tags on those little sort of stand-up paper cardboard signs there that I'm sure have been there since the 1990s. Um, yeah, but the prices haven't changed, so that's impressive. Lots of old school stuff here. I was tempted by a couple of these little guys. But um, if I'm being honest, that Mount 2 Jag I was tempted by. But um, if I'm being honest, I was telling my daughter she couldn't get anything. I, she couldn't get any toys. So Daddy couldn't get any toys this day. Which was a bit of a killer. But a point had to be made. I'm sure you guys can understand. Um, yeah, so as I said, lots and lots of die-cast vehicles. Um, if that's your scene, go there. Check it out. Prices seem pretty good compared to what I've seen in other stores. There's a store here in Melbourne that just specialises in large die-cast cars like these and the prices seem pretty good. Um, I saw a couple of you know, cool cars here that I thought, yeah, if that was my scene, I'd like it. I like the Starsky and Hutchmobile there. I like all the cop cars. Um, there's one there that you may have just missed, but I'll take a photo of it and show you later, which was the... Uh, Griswold family truckster from National Lampoon's Vacation. Loved it. You'll see a photo in a second. And, you know, also some die-cast planes. Quite a lot of civilian aircraft. A few military. Hefty prices. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the prices here. I got up a bit closer. That was $41, I think it was. Um, yeah, a little bit expensive. Um, again, yeah, if that's what you like power to you. It's it's not my scene, but I'm trying to show everybody a little bit of everything. I've had a couple of comments recently about, you know, you don't show enough of everything else, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, yeah. You can see here the offerings. <clears throat> and, you know, really nice product. Again, those little stand-up cardboard signs, I think they've been there since the 90s. Pretty hefty price tag there. A couple of hundred bucks for these babies. I mean, there's a lot of work in them, but uh, it's a bit beyond my price range. I'd much rather spend that money on something I can build myself. They're probably tremendously collectible. I don't know. It's not my gig. It's not my thing. Um, coming up is our Griswold family truckster. Love it. Didn't buy it, but I love it. And uh, also upstairs, so like I said, quite toy heavy, there's Meccano, um, there's also a lot of remote control, so, um, yeah, lots of actually pre-built stuff too, so these aren't pre-built, but quite a lot of remote control upstairs, um, you can see the prices there, and, you know, the frog, the grasshopper, that's stuff from my childhood. Uh, yeah, give you a bit more of an idea of what's in the RC section. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that those are still so popular here. And there's the prices, 145 for the grasshopper, 195 for the frog. It's pretty cheap compared to what my folks paid back in the 80s. I think my folks paid about 300 for the frog. Ouch. What a spoiled brat I was. And, uh, yeah, lots and lots of accessories. Again, it's not my scene, so I can't really give you any expert advice. But... It's there if you're interested. The Hornet, a mate of mine had the Hornet. So that's what, $339. So that's pre-built. So these are the pre-built ones here. Um, all of these boxed ones at the front here, pre-built, quite hefty prices. Uh, but I guess if you just want to plug and play, yeah, great. Happy days. And also slot cars. So Scalextric slot cars, and I think there was also AMT slot cars as well. So, I mean, it's really comprehensive. I, it's, the floor plan is massive. <coughs> I think it compares favourably to a Japanese model store, definitely. Um, in terms of size, here's trains. Again, I don't know much about trains, but I'll show them to you. Um, yeah, the price is really expensive. Uh, they also had these red rattlers that I used to catch to school. God, it makes me sound like I'm freaking ancient. $545. Ouch. And also a cool train set which is visible from outside in the actual shopping centre as well. It's really nice. Um, yeah, I think it compares favourably to a Japanese hobby store in terms of floor space, definitely. 
Um, in terms of range, particularly for the things I'm interested in, which is armour, aircraft, ships, um, yeah, look, they've got the kits, but they don't have all that aftermarket accessories. So all the resin, all the photo edge, stuff like that, they just, they don't have that depth of esoteric stuff, I guess is the best way I can put it. A um, little bit of footage here to finish up with of just some models on display. So yeah, look, it's, you know, it really reminded me of how lucky I was to go and visit Japan because in Japan, the stores just have everything you could hope for and you know the 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 esoteric stuff is really well catered for whereas here we've got it but we don't have all that esoteric stuff we don't have all that you know resin and photo etch and stuff like that just on display this has been there since 88 i remember that from when i was a kid it's cool um and also the prices yeah like i said earlier in the video i get that australian retailers have to make a profit i don't begrudge them that but it hurts when you see the prices compared to what you can pay overseas. Um, do I wish there was an Australian model industry? I sure do. Anyway, guys, look, I hope this has been helpful to you. hope it's been of interest. Please visit my blog, and I will catch you next time. Bye.